those who invest now, I think, are going to come out of it uh, a lot stronger than those who don't, because um, consumers are going to feel you've been on that journey with them. Hello, I'm Steph McGovern. Welcome to Adapting to the New Now, an exciting new series brought to you by NatWest. And in it, we explore how businesses like yours can thrive in a post-corona world. Now, right now, we're doing pretty much everything online, aren't we? All those experiences we might have done face-to-face -face have now become virtual. So this week, we are gonna look at how you can make sure your business makes the most of it when it comes to fully embracing its online operations. I'm very delighted to say that joining us virtually, of course, is Tamara Roberts, who's CEO of Ridgeview Wines, uh, based in the South Downs, where they make, amongst other things, award-winning sparkling wines. Uh, lovely to see you, Tamara. Thanks for joining us. So take me back to when the crisis first hit. It might feel like a long time ago now, I imagine, given everything that's happened. But how did it hit your business and what have you done to adapt? One of our key set sort of selling channels, the hospitality industry just closed overnight. So that had a massive impact on our business. Um, you know, almost, uh, you know, 40% of, of our predicted sales for the year was, was gone. And also because we have our own hospitality events industry on site here at the winery, which included tours, tastings, events. We even have a festival that we host on site here. Again, all of that was gone. We really had to think on our feet and adapt and see how we could engage back with some of those consumers that we'd lost. And you did that by focusing more online. Absolutely, yeah. So we did have online sales. We, we had the channel open, but we hadn't really spent a lot of time and effort pushing sales through there. So it was, yeah, that was the time to really work on those online sales, get wine into the hands of our consumers, free delivery, single bottles, working with other producers locally as well, gin producers. So we could send out packaged up cocktail ingredients, etc. Mm. So we were just trying to be as creative as we could to keep our offer fresh for the consumers. That's interesting that you approached other businesses and then started working with them to, so that you could offer a selection of products. I mean, how easy was it to do that? You know what, I think sometimes in a crisis, things are much easier to get through than they are in, in normal working time. People, everyone is just looking for the opportunity to do something different and we're all facing the same problem, really. So it's very much a united front and that element potentially of, I suppose, competitiveness or whatever tends to disappear. You all want to support and you all will benefit from it. And I think so actually sometimes in these sort of crisis situations, those partnerships are, are much easier to get off the ground. Yeah. And what was the reaction like from customers to this? Because I have to say, you know, I am one of those people who suddenly started buying things that I would normally buy in a shop. Uh, or in a restaurant or whatever, now online? Did, did you find that it, that was easy to kind of make that transition for people? Yeah, I mean, we were quite um, astonished about how much the growth of our online um, over the last few months has, has come on. I mean, it's been hundreds of percentages that have gone, you know, on a month by month basis, increasing through the web offering. And what we were quite interested with to see was, well, the, was the level of gifting. Gifting was a big chunk of that increase. People sending gifts to their friends, their families, sort of to share together a part, as it were, over Zoom, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, particularly our, our wines as well being um, sparkling wines, they're very giftable. So would you say then that you've been able to adapt to the new now? Yeah, I think we're still adapting with a longer term view, not looking at this just as a, a quick fix for a few months. We're actually looking at it now as a longer term strategy for the business. It can be scary though, can't it, thinking about investing at the moment? Because obviously there's staffing to think about, there's the, the cash flow concerns you have at the moment. So what would you say to people out there who are thinking about increasing their online side of it, but are worried about investing at the moment? In times of crisis, in times like this, it really is important to continue that investment, continue getting your voice heard by the consumer and them getting familiar with your brand because it is a little bit survival of the fittest. Those who invest now, I think, are going to come out of it uh, a lot stronger than those who don't because consumers are going to feel you've been on that journey with them. You've got to really think about what you're doing online, though, don't you? You can't just, like, throw your money at it and hope for the best. No, exactly. I mean, um, you know, any sales strategy has to go through the same process. So uh, even, you know, if you're switching to online, you have to think very carefully about who your customer is, what your aim is from, from selling online. And 
and how you're going to achieve it. So you can have lots of ideas, but really they all need to be evaluated and also think of them as, as long-term strategy, not just as a short-term fix. And I think that's the critical thing. Sometimes less is more, you know, don't try and do everything. Just looking at it more holistically then, what are the businesses that you think can move online easily? Perhaps they don't realise they can, but what are your thoughts on, on that? I mean, I think we were able to be very agile with our online offering because we already had the nuts and bolts of our online system up and running. We had the ability for people to buy through the website. So for us to be able to increase that and, and improve on that was relatively straightforward. Probably if you are starting completely from scratch and you don't have that, you know, the commerce side on your website, you know, there's a bit more work to be done, but it's like anything. You can make it as straightforward or as complicated as you want. And you can start really simple, a few product lines, and then you can build on it. So you don't have to start all big singing and, you know, all singing and dancing. You can start really, really small and just build on it. And actually a lot of it's around the storytelling and storytelling is so, so important for any business. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because people want to really love the brand as much as the product, don't they? They want to know that it's got a story behind it. The, the thing that's really struck me in all of this is the creativity of, of business. You know, we've seen lots of things you wouldn't expect to be able to do virtually actually happening, whether it's yoga classes, you know, online pubs with quizzes or, you know, creating nice experiences at home that you share with people virtually. That feels like that has been key to businesses succeeding in all of this. Yeah, I think your online, your virtual presence is super important. And, and that engagement through all of those digital channels, I mean, social media, I mean, everybody's online now. We're a very creative industry in terms of how we go, our products, as it were. So people love to be part of that, see the vineyard, see the wine production areas and those sorts of things. So we've been busy videoing sort of snapshots of what we do where people would normally come and visit us to see it all, we can now take that a little snapshot for them when they buy a bottle of wine. They can, they can upload and see um, where it was made, how it's made, and see the people involved. You know, you buy from people. People are an, a really important part of that. It's not just a case of selling your product online. It, it's selling your business, really, isn't it? I agree. And I think also it gives you the opportunity with the virtual and the online stuff to uh, yeah, increase that level of engagement with your brand. If someone goes into a shop and just picks a bottle off the shelf, it's not quite the same as being, at, you know, having the story right there in front of them, the people, the place, which you can do much more easily virtually than you can in sort of the standard retail arena. A big thing as well with all of this is people still want experiences that they'd normally have, you know, face to face. We still want to socialise with people. We still want to drink together. But all of that now is happen happening virtually. It's something we can do online. So there's a real opportunity for businesses to capitalise on this, isn't there? Absolutely. I mean, I think it, it opens up a whole um, new area for, for all businesses, actually, the, the whole appetite now for everything being online. I mean, it was definitely there before the pandemic, but it's incredibly strong now. Um, and we've put much more visual content online. Uh, we have a glimpse of what we do here in, in a tour package that we can offer consumers online when they buy a bottle. Also, we're looking at rolling that out more on a corporate side as well because there's plenty of business out there who still want to entertain their clients still want to feel engaged perhaps with employees who are, who are working from home or have been furloughed so the opportunity there to offer something online in that way where everyone can have um, a tasting with us looking and, and seeing what we do at the same time is, is quite an exciting opportunity what's the thing you've learned from all of this you know what? It's been quite quite an amazing um, journey. I mean, it is the ability to be agile um, and to have uh, the ability to think quickly and have a good a team around you who are going to be creative. You know, from our perspective, though, we had a lot of ideas of, of what we could do. And it is quite important to sit back before rushing into, into the first thing that comes in and really think through. And I think a little bit when I was talking about that was the making sure that actually what you're doing has some, some longer term aspect to your business too. It's not just something that's going to be a bit flash in the pan. And I think that was the thing is like have all the ideas, but remember it's some, you know, you, they have to be evaluated before you, you, you put them mm. in place. What are your thoughts on the, the future of hospitality now? Do you think it's going to look very different or will once things start to ease, it eventually get back to what it was before? You know, I think as a society, you know, leisure time has 
become extremely important to us and rightly so. Um, and the hospitality industry plays a huge part in that. Provided the industry is, is sensible, cautious and puts in place the safety elements that it needs to put in place. I think people, when they go back out now, are going to want to have that reassurance that their, their safety has been considered. So I, d I don't think it's going to be a quick overnight return. I think it's going to be a slow and cautious return. Yes, the landscape will probably have changed, but it, it will return. Thanks, Tamara. Lovely to see you. Now, do make sure you join us for the next episode of Adapting to the New Now, where we'll be talking about how to make sure you can plan for a successful recovery in 2020. Thank you very much.